Is stationary RV living a cheap way to live? Well, the simple answer is it can be, but... Welcome to RV Retirement Redesign, where we are redesigning and redefining. We're redesigning our retirement and redefining RV living, not because we want a cheap way to survive, but because we want to thrive in this new season of life on our terms. Is stationary RV living a cheap way to live? Well, the simple answer is it can be, but let's talk about what cheap actually is. You know, there are many different variations of living stationary in an RV, and the cost really depends on the lifestyle you want to live rather than the abode you're living in. So let's begin by exploring a few definitions from Merriam-Webster. So what does cheap mean? Well, it's obtainable at a low price, purchasable below the going price or the real value. Doesn't sound so bad. The second meaning of inferior quality or worth. Not what we really want to hear about our RV. The third, gained or done with little effort. A little bit ambiguous, right? The word inexpensive basically means it's reasonable in price. Funny enough, the second definition was it's cheap. The last word, frugal, is defined as characterized by or reflecting economy in the use of resources. Sparing, thrifty, economical, careful in the use of one's money or resources. A pretty good description. So now that we have a reference for some of these words, let's talk about a few reasons folks choose to live in an RV and some of the costs that might be associated. Throughout this video, I'm going to share links, which you can find at the bottom of this video, to other YouTube videos that kind of exemplify some of the examples I'm sharing today. Low income housing. Times are tough and there are people who find themselves with little income or a fixed income that might not allow them to afford an apartment or a rental home. And just as there are low income brick and mortar housing options, the same holds true for RV homes and parks. The reality is that when money is tight and options are few, selecting the cheapest option is often the most reasonable way to go. In many cases, there is no additional funds to put into maintaining for aesthetics or creating a yard that's inviting or upgrading the interior or exterior of the home. Band-Aids are the answers to issues or problems when life deals you this hand. Now, that being said, there are many low-income RVers who take pride in keeping their homes clean and the area around their home clear of debris. There is a big difference between full-time RVers who love living in their RVs and those that really don't care and are often called trailer trash, a label we want to avoid and eliminate. Another lifestyle of choice is living in an RV to pay off debt. There's actually a large number of families that have made the choice to live as inexpensive as possible in order to pay off accumulated debt. Purchasing a used RV and renovating it with DIY projects has helped a lot of folks live well below their income level and allow their debt to be paid off pretty quickly. The key here is that they are more likely sacrificing space over a quality home environment. If you have the time and the desire, there's a great number of DIY projects you can accomplish for very little money that can make a huge difference in your RV home. And some families are choosing to live a bit more frugal in order to build wealth. These families are living inexpensively to rapidly increase their savings to build the home of their dreams or perhaps finance a new way of living, such as full-time mobile RV living. They pretty much have the same rationale and theories that pertain to paying off debt. The tiny home craze has now incorporated RVers into the genre. They have a desire to live tiny and minimalistic. So choosing to live tiny requires a great deal of thought and eventually sacrifice. Downsizing from a traditional brick and mortar means giving up all the extras you'd like to have. It can also be incredibly freeing, depending on if you buy a new or used tiny home and where you decide to place it. That will be the deciding factor on the actual cost and your monthly expenses. And finally, for retirees and semi-retirees, there is now an alternative retirement living option. Retirees are now seeing RV living as a great alternative to living in a home with all the required maintenance or a condo and apartment that means climbing stairs or putting up with somebody living above you. It also reduces the treasures you have collected throughout your life in a graduated amount of time. 
Of course, that means you most likely will need to rent a storage space, which is an additional cost factor, until you have dispersed all the items you no longer want or need. This is particularly free for older parents that don't want their children to be burdened with the removal of their stuff after their passing. The choice of lifestyle is a major factor in your cost of stationary RV living. Other costs to consider are as follows. Where will you place your RV? An RV park or community resorts, they require monthly rent that many include the water, sewer, and garbage, which is nice. But you'll have to think about rents that might increase, and as time goes on, it could even change hands. Electrical, surprisingly, it was higher than I thought it would be. But if you have solar panels, that can help with this cost. Other extras might be if you have an extra car, a storage trailer, if you want to shed on the property, depending on where you live, this could be an extra cost for your RV park. There are other rules and regulations you'll really want to be aware of as well. Some of them include a pet, depending on its size. There might be charges or uh, limitations, so you'll need to be aware of that. If you want to live on your own land, you really need to check into the laws. You will have land taxes. Water, garbage, and sewer will be something that you'll either have a monthly charge for or you'll need to incur the cost of drilling for well water, putting in the same septic system, and those are actually very major costs. If you live on someone else's land, you'd probably just have the initial moving cost and setup fees, but you also need to plan on paying your fair share. In some situations, it's not very cheap to live in an RV at all, especially if you purchase a new one and you're living on someone else's land, you're purchasing land, or if even living in an RV park. All of those monthly costs do add up. You will need to set up your propane system. You'll need to have licenses, insurance, annual registration fees. And just because your RV might be brand new doesn't mean you won't have maintenance issues and charges related to that as well. A lot of the setup fees can be offset by doing it yourself. Things like skirting the RV, doing any kind of landscaping that you want to have around your home, putting on a porch or extended decking. These you can do yourself as well. And then there's the interior, making your RV your home. Again, depending on the type of RV you have, you might have a washer dryer hookup. So you might want to put a new washer dryer in there. Whatever it takes to make the home yours. So is living in an RV a cheap way to live? Well, as I said in the beginning, it can be. But it all depends on what you like, what your lifestyle is, how much money you have to maintain that lifestyle. Every person's a bit different, every family's a bit different, and every home will be a bit different. That's what's great about RV living. Everybody can do their own thing. We hope you enjoyed today's video and you found some value in some of the information we shared. If you would like more videos like these, please like and share. And now here's this week's RV Gratefulness Photo. Mm -hmm.